everyone. Heather Holmes here with KTV Fox 2 News in the San Francisco Bay Area. And joining me once again to talk about the pandemic is Dr. Rashid Chatani. He is IEM medical officer and an infectious disease specialist. Doctor, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Heather, it's always a pleasure to be uh, on the show with you to talk about this very, very important uh, problem that the nation has been facing for over a year and continues to, uh, you know, be a problem. Yeah, and you've been at the forefront in trying to address the issue. We've been tracking you as you've traveled across the country. Tell us where you are right now and, and, and what the situation is like where you are. So I've been traveling all over the country, you know, whether it was testing or tracing or, or, or setting up monoclonal antibody uh, uh, treatment centers, uh, putting together alternative care sites, uh, and now, you know, of course, uh, involved in vaccination. I'm in Florida right now assisting. Uh, in vaccination campaigns over here. Uh, things are going very well in terms of, uh, uh, you know, having the vaccine and then being able to give it to, uh, uh, to the individuals that require the vaccine. Uh, for each of the states uh, at this particular point, uh, the requirements are different uh, and, uh, and those are based upon, you know, the availability of the vaccine in terms of how much they have and how much they can dispense. Uh, right now, uh, across the country, we are administering approximately 14.5 million doses uh, uh, 14.45 million doses uh, per day, which is a very uh, good number. Uh, so that gives me a tremendous amount of hope that, uh, yes, uh, we are moving in the right direction. However, uh, you know, one of the things that has to be considered is that, uh, yes, the numbers are going down, the hospitalizations have gone down, and deaths have gone, gone down. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, we've lost over half a million Americans right now uh, to this Scrooge. And uh, we have 28.3 million cases. Uh, the numbers, yes, are going down, but uh, do remember that uh, they are not uh, really as, uh, you know, at, at, at a safe level at this point. Neither the deaths nor the hospitalizations, they are not even close to what we saw during the second surge. So we still need to push and bring them down. Vaccination is going to help. But yes, again, one of the most important things is uh, masking, social distancing, and all the other precautions that we were taking. We need to continue to take those. And then, uh, you know, the nation uh, should embrace the vaccines that are available right now and make sure that whenever they are, you know, in their, when, whenever they fall into the line where they can get the vaccine, they should go and get the vaccine. Yeah, speaking of vaccines, doctor, it appears as though that Johnson & Johnson is, is a step closer to getting approval. Talk about how that will change the dynamics of the vaccine rollout. Well, absolutely. You know, Johnson, FDA uh, looked at the data, uh, efficacy data or effectiveness data and the safety data for Johnson & Johnson and looked very, very, very good. Uh, so now the committee is looking at uh, providing it with an emergency authorization used, which should come probably either this week or next week, hopefully as soon as possible. And then Johnson & Johnson can uh, have the manufacturing uh, in place so that uh, a large number of quantities of vaccines are provided because right now we've got Moderna and Pfizer and if we have uh, uh, Johnson & Johnson also come in the mix, uh, then, then it would be a very, very good thing. It's a, by the way, Johnson & Johnson is just one shot and, uh, and, and it has shown effectiveness against uh, the wild strain, the original strain that we are talking about. In the US, uh, the efficacy was uh, pretty decent. Uh, FDA is saying that the vaccine has shown 64% efficacy against the South African strain, or was in South Africa when it was tested and where the South African strain was pre prevalent. Uh, and in the US, uh, we've seen about 72% efficacy uh, of this uh, uh, vaccine against the virus. And in Brazil, uh, where the Brazilian strain has emerged, it showed uh, efficacy of about 68%. So th those are very, very, very good things to uh, you know kind of report uh, because it seems uh, uh, that uh, this vaccine not only is going to be good for the wild strain, but also good for the South African strain as well as the Brazilian strain. So those are good things. Yeah, they certainly are. And also, doctor, we are learning that the FDA is now changing um, sort of the guidelines for the transportation and storage of the Pfizer vaccine. How crucial is this going to be? Well, that is that is a that's very very good news, and you know Pfizer was able to determine that actually they can transport their vaccines at a much uh, you know 
lower or whatever. It's not as, as, as at the sub-zero temperature that it was having difficulty transporting the vaccine. So now the transportation process is going to be easy. Uh, please, everybody needs to consider that, you know, when the vaccine uh, is provided to the vaccine facility where vaccination is happening, uh, they can keep the vaccine safe for, uh, almost a, a week or longer in some cases uh, for uh, uh, in refrigeration and in, in refri regular refrigerators, uh, but they have to use them. So the, the states um, and the federal government has all these protocols uh, that people have to follow who are working in this, uh, in this uh, vaccine world essentially right now uh, to make sure that the vaccines are not wasted. Uh, so we are being very cautious about that. Uh, but uh, yes, the vaccines, if easy transportation at, at, at a much uh, higher temperature, uh, then, then it's a very, very, very good thing for everybody. Yeah, it sort of eliminates one obstacle that we've seen. I, I want to talk now about the variants. You, you mentioned those right. earlier, but there really is concern, uh, especially about the California variant. Yes, uh, well, you know, it, it's uh, the California variant uh, is uh, a serious problem, in all honesty. We're still looking at some of that stuff. Uh, some, some research has been done. The variants is, variant is uh, uh, also present in other states apart from California, uh, but its prevalence among or you know the number of people that are getting the uh, this variant in California uh, is is it increased from almost zero percent uh, earlier to about fifty percent between September twentieth and January of. Uh, 2021. So that means that a majority of the people that are getting COVID-19 are getting the California strain. Again, it is a, it, it has been seen uh, in, in, in other states also. Uh, in it, it, this, this, this variant is called uh, uh, B1.4 two nine uh, and and uh, you know this variant has shown that it is uh, perhaps causing more hospitalization perhaps causing more uh, serious disease uh, but one of the things that has to be taken into consideration is that uh, uh, during this particular time period the September to January time period when the healthcare system was overwhelmed with COVID-19 we still need to parse out if the variant caused the high death rate and hospitalization rate, or was it because that the health system was just uh, at a point that it could not deal with anything? But again, it is there. Uh, you know, we are learning that perhaps it might. Uh, you know, the, the neutralizing antibody that we are using uh, for COVID-19 is not going to be as effective against it. So we are still finding out. So again, how do you protect yourself? You know, wear the mask social distancing and use the precautions. And I think the state has issued those and can, can continue to repeat those. But, you know, complacency becomes a major problem. And I, I'm, I'm looking at the numbers right now in, across the nation and across different states. And what I'm seeing is that the yeah, numbers went down, the hospitalizations went down, the death rates went down, but I'm seeing an uptick and, and you know, in deaths, uh, a slight uptick in deaths. And, and what that means is that, you know, the uh, the Super Bowl, uh, the Valentine's Day, and all the other parties that people are having is having an, having an effect on on you know the, the deaths as well as hospitalizations right now. And if we do not continue to be observant of the precautions that are needed, then these numbers will go up. So to all, you know, this is not the end. You know, this is the beginning of the decline of this problem, but we've got to continue to work together uh, to make sure that, you know, we are decreasing the number of deaths and, and decreasing the number of hospitalizations as well as cases. Yeah, still got to take those precautions. All right, final question for you, doctor. Some interesting research when it comes to the flu and what we're seeing in regards to trends uh, concerning the flu as we're all in the middle of this pandemic. Yeah, so, you know, to be honest about it, what we're seeing is that, uh, you know, we didn't have a bad flu season, right? And, and uh, I think one of the most important things to understand and appreciate from that is that we were taking precautions like wearing a mask and, and observing social distancing. So here is a lesson uh, that observing all those precautions, hand washing, you know, that was the most, that, that's something that I've been talking about for the last 20 years. Uh, hand washing and, and, and taking just common sense measures can decrease the number of other viruses uh, that affect us in a big way, including COVID-19. And, and, you know, this is not something that is unusual when you go to countries like China or Japan or, uh, or, or Korea, South Korea, or other countries, people wear masks during the flu season all the time. And, you know, the numbers are less than what we see in the United States. Now, 
practically we have seen the effect of it. And, and I hope this is a lesson that we will take forward and, and use the precaution. Now, we don't know that, is it, is it, uh, is it just that, you know, this, this uh, uh, COVID-19 or SARS uh, uh, coronavirus 2 has taken over the ecology of everything in terms of uh, uh, the climate and, and the environment, and it's just overwhelmed everything that other viruses cannot emerge. That is perhaps one hypothesis that has not yet been proven, but we have to consider all of the different things uh, that are happening. But again, uh, you know, we know that masking does work, uh, whether it's flu or whether it's COVID-19. Uh, so let's do that. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we will continue to have less flu in the community and less influenza, uh, which is going to be a huge plus for the, for, for the United States, because that means less deaths, less hospitalizations, right? Yes, yeah, certainly is. All right, doctor, really appreciate it. You have, uh, you know, safe travels and, and thank you again for all the work you're doing uh, in, in the pandemic. Really appreciate it. Dr. Rashid Fatani, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.